But I always say that you need to have a five minute version, a 20 minute version, and then a let's get together of a coffee version. Because you never know how much time you're gonna have or how much time she's going to give you. So you want to know it from your heart. You don't want to you don't want her to sense that you're just flipping the pages, especially if you're doing this over the phone, because she's just gonna be bored. Um, and the chances are, if you're talking to her on the phone, that she is doing other things at the same time. She's got you muted, and she's unloading the dishwasher. She's dealing with the kids. So if you speak from your heart with enthusiasm and with passion, she's going to pay more attention than if you're just reading her the marketing plan page by page. Skill number four, following up with your prospects. And there's four concepts. Concept number one is follow up is doing what you said you would do. And that is where we drop the ball all the time, myself included. You know those people that I texted and messaged to watch the video and I said I was going to follow up? I didn't follow up. And we all know that you know, fortunes in the follow-up. Concept number two is the only reason to have an exposure is to set up the next exposure. I love this. Let me explain how this works. So let's say you call them on Friday because they said they were going to watch the video on Thursday and they say they haven't watched it. Now you don't want to, you know, come down on them like, hey, you said you were going to watch it. You know, why didn't you watch it? No, no, no. You want to say something like, that's okay, you know, I get it, life is busy sometimes. When do you think you could watch it for sure, for sure? And Eric says in his book, there's something kind of magical about the for sure, for sure. So, you know, they say, and now they're going to feel a little bit guilty because they've, you know, committed to you. So they're going to say, I will watch it today. I'm sure I can watch it today. Great. So if I call you tomorrow morning, you will for sure, for sure have watched it, right? Right. So then you call them back. So let's say they did watch it. Um, what you don't want to say to them is, so what do you think? Because chances are they may start with something negative, like, you know, I don't have the money to invest in this, or, um, you know, I'm not sure I can talk in front of people, or, you know, whatever their concern is. So instead, you want to start by saying something like, what did you like best? What did you hear that, you, that sounded good to you? Or on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 meaning you have zero interest, and 10 meaning you want to get started today, where are you at? And basically anything over a one is good because that means they have some sort of interest. So whatever number they say, you're going to start there. So for example, if she says, well, you know, I, I think I'm a four, then you're going to say, you know, well, it sounds like you're a little bit curious about it, but you have some, some concerns. So tell me, what's one of your concerns? You don't want all the concerns. You just want to handle them one at a time. This is what Julie David does in, after she has someone watch a video. She does the 1 through 10 thing. So let's say her concern is, um, you know, I, I just don't think I can talk in front of people. Then you want to, again, show the empathy. You know, I know how you feel. You know, I felt that way in the beginning too. But what I found is the more presentations I did, the easier it got. And you can actually hold up note cards and just follow a script. You know, that, you know, just kind of walk her through that. And after you've kind of gone through that whole thing on that one concern, you know, does that make you feel a little bit better? She says yes. Okay, so now what's your number? Well, now she's a six. Okay, we're getting there. So sounds like you're still interested. We're going in the right direction, but you have some concerns. So what's your next concern? Well, I don't think I have the money to get started. Okay, well, let's talk about that. And talk her through financing, through a co-signer. Start with, you know, how much money do you, can you come up with? Because if she tells you that she can come up with nothing, you know, she's not willing to put much into this. But if she says, well, you know, I could come up with a hundred bucks, great, let's start there. Do you think we could show your, the catalog around to some other people, um, you know, out of state that could do some orders or show the book around, you know, to help support you, you know, and just kind of work through that concern too, okay? Are you feeling better about that? All right, what's your number? And you keep going back to that until she gets up to an eight, nine, or ten. And when she gets up to an 8, 9, or 10, and she says, well, you know, I think you've addressed all my concerns, and I think I just, I need to talk to my husband about it. Well, then you're going to say, well, of course you do, you know, but let me ask you, is he generally excited about things you want to do? You know, make sure you sound excited. So when do you think you're going to be able to talk to him? Oh, probably this weekend. Great. So if I call you Monday to follow up, you probably will have talked to him by then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the whole same thing. What's a good time? What's a good number to reach you? Set that appointment. Confirm that appointment. Okay, I'll follow up with you on Monday. So basically, you're not 
ending the conversation without setting up the next conversation. And concept number three is it takes on average four to six exposures for the average person to join. So what that means is one person um, might sign up the day you meet her. One, another person it might take 10 times before you actually you know, are able to reassure her enough to where she's willing to take the plunge and go for it. Um, so you want to stay in touch with them. You know, I have two jewelers, Erin and Tracy. Both of them were past hostess with, hostesses with me. Erin actually told me at one point to stop stalking her, but I just stayed in touch. It was really mostly through Facebook, you know, liking their posts, checking back with them about a show, and then they eventually came in. But if I hadn't stayed in some sort of touch with them, you know, they would have forgotten me. They probably would have met somebody else, you know, and signed up with that jewelry person. So you want to keep inviting them until they say, stop inviting me, and then, you know, maybe it's over. Concept number four is you want to condense the exposures for better results. So what that means is, let's say you do a one-on-one -on -one with her on the phone, and, you know, um, she's going to talk to her husband about it, or she's got something going on, and what you don't want to say is, well, we have um, a brownies and bling in three weeks, you know, why don't you come to that? You don't want those three weeks to go by because a lot of life happens in those three weeks. And when you try and reach out to her again, she, that's like starting over with her. So what I would do, because we have jewel school every Monday night, is I would say at the end of a one-on-one, -on -one, hey, why don't you come on Monday night and meet some of the girls? You know, it's only an hour. Come meet some of the girls. And invite her so that you're shortening those exposure times to be closer together. Um, questions and objections. So after you finally get them to watch the video, and they may have some questions and objections, and usually they are either limiting, they have limiting belief in themselves, or they have a limiting belief in network marketing. You know, maybe they had, they've had experience with network marketing in the past, and it didn't go well. So if that's her concern, you want to talk her through that. You know, tell me what happened there. Because she may have been with a company where there's no support, and you can tell her how supportive our family is. Or, um... You know, when she has limiting belief in her own ability, that usually translates into, I don't have the time or I don't have the money. Aren't those the two most excuses that we get? So again, you want to use your empathy, your feel felt found. I know how you feel. I felt that way when I got started, but what I found was, you know, blah, blah, blah. So when someone says, I don't have the money, I love what Eric says in his book, and I'm just going to read it word for word. He says, when a person tells me I just don't have the money right now, I respond. I had the same exact challenge. I didn't have enough money to pay my bills, let alone start a new business. But when I thought about it, I realized that if I didn't have enough money to pay my bills now, how was I going to change that in the future? I was tired of being behind. I was tired of always scrambling. I wanted more out of life. So you know what I did? I found a way, and it was the best decision I ever made. Let me ask you something. If you really felt this was a chance for you to take control of your financial future, do you think you could find a way to make it happen? And I love that explanation. You want to tweak that to make it sound like your words, but it is so true because if someone who doesn't have the money, their car breaks down, they're going to find a way to get the car fixed because they need it. Well, a lot of people out there need Premier. They need to make a change in their life to help their families and, you know, add some income. And if you don't have that story, if that's not your story that you didn't, you know, you didn't get in for financial reasons, use someone else's story. You know, my girlfriend Sally in Premier, you know, she had the same thing going on. And she wasn't sure where, how she was going to pay for it. But what she found, you know, and share that story. So that is skill number one, two, three, and four. There are three more skills, but I think I'm going to save that one for the next video. So what's our homework assignment? We are going to write down 100 names by Sunday night. So let's start posting in our Facebook group when you hit increments of 10. So I'm going to do this too. So when you get 10 names, write, I got 10. When you get to 20 names, I got 20. All the way up, let's get 100 by tomorrow. And again, these are not people that we want to share Premiere with. This is just to get your mind going into who you know. You're going to have people on that list that you're never going to talk to about Premiere. If she's, you know, if it's your 98-year-old grandmother, put her on the list. If it's your 18-year-old niece, put her on the list. If she hates jewelry, hates you, hates network marketing, put her on the list. Got my drift? All right. Well, I hope you girls have a great Saturday night. Can't wait to see our results and to talk with you this week. Love you, girls. Bye.